Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Johnny. Today's the first episode in a series I'm going to be doing about gotchas when using paginated reports. So what is a gotcha? For me, it's something that's maybe a little bit unintuitive, perhaps a feature that doesn't quite work the way you'd expect. The kind of thing that if you don't pay attention to it, it's going to trip you up. Now this is going to be particularly useful for people who perhaps have got plenty of experience using Power BI but have never actually used paginated reports and in particular it's going to be good for people who want to use a Power BI data set as the source for that paginated report. Today we're going to look at the paginated report query designer and in particular some of the things you need to pay attention to if you want to use it with a Power BI data set. How even is this a gotcha? You'd think this would be more straightforward. Surely the paginated report builder is built for using with Power BI. And yeah, there are plenty of great paginated report builder tutorials that are out there. Laura GB over on her YouTube channel, Hatful of Data, has a great YouTube series, 12 Days of Paginated Reports. Definitely check that out. But the data source for that is actually SQL Server. Over on Microsoft's Power BI YouTube channel, there are some paginated report training resources on there too. They have a paginated reports in a day training series. In episode nine of that training series, they do cover how to use a Power BI data set as a source for a paginated report. However, when they come to do the demo, they move away from that data set and again, use SQL Server as the source. So there's no step-by-step -step guide. There is a written guide of how to do it published over on the Microsoft website. However, this guide uses a really kooky method where it encourages you to go grab some DAX that's been generated by a Power BI report and then paste that into the design mode of the query designer. I've had a few people reach out to me when they've been trying to use this guide because trying to understand it, they've gotten into a right pickle. Personally, I'd avoid using DAX that's been generated by Power BI. It formats it in some really strange ways. Now using that design mode, is a perfectly valid approach, but if I were you, rather than use Power BI DAX, I'd use DAX Studio, and you can either use the Query Builder, or if you're confident with DAX as a query language, write your DAX statement from scratch. But if you need to paginate reports and you're trying to get comfortable with them, my view is that the Query Builder is the most straightforward and simplest way to get you going. Let's jump onto the paginated report builder and I can walk you through it. Gotcha number one. If you like using the wizards, these do not work with Power BI datasets. If I click on 21 of these and select create a new data set, when I launch the new dialog, it won't give me the option to select Power BI. If you want to use a data set in the Power BI service, you have to start with a blank report. First thing we have to do is to define our data source. Let's head over to data sources on the left hand side. Right click. Add Power BI dataset connection. That will connect you to the Power BI service and then you select the dataset you want from there. Next is you define your dataset. Now this is slightly confusing terminology. We use the term dataset to also describe a published data model in the Power BI service. In paginated report world, the dataset is really defining the subset of data that you want to return from your data source. So to define our dataset, again head over to the left hand side where it says datasets. Right click here, add data set. Now it's good practice to give this a friendly name. That name can't have any spaces in it, so you either need to write it in camel case or perhaps use underscores to separate the words. From this data source drop down, we need to pick our data source. And then at the bottom of the window, select query designer. Now, if you've worked with SQL Server reporting services in the past, and especially if you've worked with multi-dimensional analysis services models, this is going to look quite familiar. The user interface is basically the same as it was for building MDX reports, and some of the terminology you're going to see in this is a little bit quirky. So, for example, you're going to see terms like measure group, dimension, hierarchy, now these are really old terms that have come from MDX world because Microsoft have basically crowbarred in the Power BI dataset query design experience into the old MDX version. In fact, what you can do is you can switch from DAX mode to MDX mode. And in fact, it is possible to execute an MDX query against a Power BI dataset. 
Power BI though is optimized for DAX, so you should definitely use DAX in this scenario. In the Query Designer, over on the left hand side, your fields from your data model are displayed, just like the fields pane as if you were in Power BI Desktop. And to build your data set, it's simply a case of dragging and dropping from this model view on the left hand side into this query pane on the right hand side. A little bit of like pulling fields onto a table if you're in Power BI Desktop. Let's start with a nice simple data set. So I'm going to pull out my continent. Calendar year month. And my revenue. I can preview my query by clicking this option in the middle. Or there's also a button in the ribbon at the top. If I toggle that on, then my query will auto execute when I change the content. So if I drag year month off, I lose that. And if I stick back on again, go. I'm happy with that basic query, so let's click OK. And here you'll see the query design is auto generated a DAX statement. Click OK again. And on the left hand side, fields from my data set are now available. I'm going to add a table to my report. And I'm going to drag my fields onto the table. Hit the run button to preview the report. And we're all good. Now, perhaps I want to add a filter to that very basic data selection. Let's go back into the report builder. To access the query designer again, come over to my data set on the left hand side, right click, select data set properties. And for the data set properties pane, I can select the query designer again. Filters can be added using this pane at the top of the query designer. It's almost a little bit like the filters pane in Power BI. The dimension drop down lets me select which table I'd like to select my filter from. And hierarchy lets me select which specific field. Again, those two specific pieces of terminology come from MDX really. So think of dimension as table and hierarchy as field. And we can select an operator. And in the filter expression from the drop down, we can select which item we want to filter for. So let's select Europe. Now let's go back and check out the report. So that's worked great, but it's worth noting that that filter is hard coded. My users aren't going to see that filter, nor are they going to be able to change it. But what if I want to make that a little bit more flexible and let my users actually chop and change what filter is applied? In that case, what I need to do is change that filter to be a parameter. So let's head back to our query designer. And if we go up to the filter pane that we used before, this is where we can set a parameter. Here's where we come across another gotcha. Because sometimes, depending on your screen resolution, it won't render this box over on the right hand side. In fact, even on my screen, it's difficult to tell what it actually is without adjusting the width of the columns. If I want this filter to be parameterized instead, all I need to do is tick this box. Now, because this filter is now parameter, if I want to, I can leave this filter expression blank. When the report is run, the user is now forced to make a selection. Or back in the query designer, I can still leave a selection in here. And then when I run my report, that now acts as the default. So the report will run without having to make a selection. But after the event, I can still go back and change that as I see fit. And I can even select multiple values if I want. Let's explore some more features in the query designer. So up at the top of the screen, you've got this option here. Hovering over that, it tells us that is enable multi-value parameters. So I guess this is where you're going to control whether or not your end users can pass multiple parameters to your report or just one. I've currently got it toggled on and as we saw just before I, I selected more than one parameter. Let's toggle that off and see what happens. When I run the report, my drop down here still seems to let me select more than one thing. It still let me select multi parameters. What happens when I run it? Ah, okay, it throws an error. 
So here's another gotcha. That doesn't work how you'd expect it to. It doesn't prevent the user from selecting multi-parameters, it just stops multi-parameters being passed through to the DAX, and that's what throws the error. So my advice here would be to leave that setting toggled on, but just to give you a bit of a bonus gotcha, what you'll tend to find when you come into the Query Designer is that when you look at this, it's magically toggled itself back on anyway. Now being able to control that multi-select versus single select scenario is something that's useful and a feature that you may want to implement and you can do it, you just don't control it through the Query Designer. Let me show you now. When you create a parameter using that Query Designer, you'll see up here in the top left hand corner, you've now got this store constant parameter that's been created. You can access the properties of that parameter either by right clicking here or you can actually go up to where you can see the parameter in the report canvas itself and you can access it from there too. Here in the middle of the properties pane you've got the property to allow multiple values or not so if I unclick that let's check it out. And now you can see if I select from continent name up here I've only got the option to select one value. Okay, I'm back in the Query Designer now. One thing I have been asked in the past is how come in the parameters options there's two sets of checkboxes and these ones on the right hand side are actually greyed out. Best way to demonstrate this is to make a few changes to my dataset query. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my calendar year month field from here and instead I'm going to add in calendar date. And let's imagine now I want to add a filter so that I can parameterize that date. Select calendar from dimension, calendar date from hierarchy. In the operator, it defaults to equal, but what I can do is select a range, be that range inclusive, so it will include both ends of my selected values, or exclusive, so any values within the range. So if I click range inclusive, you'll see a colon pops up here, and my second parameter is now available to select. So what that means is by clicking both of those parameter boxes, it's going to give me the option when I run my report to set both the calendar date from and the calendar date to. I need to remove calendar year from here first because that doesn't exist in my data set anymore. Call my calendar date. You can see in my parameters pane at the top here, I've got two new parameters pop up. And when I run my report, now select 1st of January. 31st of January and there you go. So that's an introduction to getting started building a very basic report that uses a Power BI data set and uses the Query Designer. And I've highlighted some of the pitfalls you might stumble across just to get data into the report. This particular report is pretty horrible looking. In the immortal words of Patrick LeBlanc, that's an ugly baby. And that's definitely not something that I would publish and share with business users. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to work through how to turn this into a much more polished report that you would be happy to share. And along the way, there are going to be more gotchas that we're going to call out. So I hope that's been useful. If you've got any questions or feedback, please don't be afraid to slide them into that comments section below. If you have enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to follow along for more content about Power BI, and especially if you want to follow along with this series about paginated reports, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.